Hello fellow cyborgs, today I want to talk with you about five books that I haven't talked to you about before, but they're books that I remember really, really enjoying, and some that I wanted to just put on your radar. This first one here is a poetry collection, Flowers of Evil or Les Fleurs du Mal in French, which is the original language this was published in, by Charles Baudelaire. This is a dual language book edition and it's edited and translated by Wallace Fowley. So Les Fleurs du Mal is what I, it, it reminds me of Edgar Allan Poe and how I feel like I should think about Edgar Allan Poe. It's super emo and gothic and kind of awesome. The poems in here are, are really gothic and they talk about a bunch of things like the beauty of decay, the life cycles about misery and suffering. I remember them being really melodramatic but also just really fun to read and I actually wrote a paper on this in college which is why I have this and it's all highlighted and stuff. So I read this, oh I don't know, back in 2009 or 10 and I just remember being so fond of it because it was just so emo. One of his most favorite poems is called The Albatross and I will read that for you so you have an idea of kind of what themes he's playing with and stuff. Often as an amusement crewmen catch albatrosses, huge birds of the sea who follow indolent companions of the voyage, the ship gliding over the salty deeps. As soon as they have placed them on the deck, these kings of the sky, awkward and ashamed, pitiably let their large white wings drag at their sides like oars. This winged voyager, how gauche and weak he is, once so handsome, how comic and ugly he is. One sailor irritates his beak with a pipe stem, another mimes as he limps the invalid who once flew. The poet is like the prince of the clouds, who haunts the tempest and mocks the archer, exiled on the earth in the midst of derision, his giant wings keep him from walking." So just a lot of really loaded imagery and, as I said, kind of emo, but I really enjoyed this at the time that I was reading it and I definitely need to reread it, as I'm going to probably say for every single book I mentioned to you, and all of the stuff I skipped, like the criticisms at the back. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking, it's just going to be happening right now. The next book that I want to talk to you about is The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. I read this back in 2013 and I remember enjoying this but on kind of an academic level because this is kind of more classic science fiction rather than like new more readable science fiction. I was new to the genre at the time I was reading this okay but the cool thing about this is that not only does it take place on a planet called winter but this is all about gender fluidity. So the main character in here is Jen Lee I and he's a, a human like us from what I can remember and he is acting as an ambassador to the Gethians here on the planet of winter. And the Gethians are interesting because they're gender fluid people who only during mating times pick one gender or another and they can swap between the genders at each successive mating time. And so everyone can give birth if they so choose to. You have to think about these people when they're not, you know, in heat, so to speak, or not about to get on their their sexy times not as he or she but kind of not as it either because in the english language we don't have a respectful gender neutral pronoun yet do we which is kind of stupid it ends up being kind of an adventure story at certain times but this is really an interesting look at gender and i meant remember just being really impressed with how this did that. So if you are interested in the idea of gender fluidity and you want to learn more about it in a science fiction sort of setting, then I highly recommend you check out The Left Hand of Darkness. Then we have Watership Down by Richard Adams. And I read this back in 2012 as well. So I'm a bit rusty on this, but this is a one of those I think I mentioned in my winter reading wrap-up, anthropomorphized animal, can talk, has a culture sort of book. You know, this is like one of the classics of that. And this is about a village, a, a group, a herd of rabbits, a collection of rabbits, a community of rabbits who have to leave their home and they go on an adventure. And this feels very similarly from my experience to Tail Chaser Song or just like The Hobbit, it's 
an adventure, a travel, a journey story, and the protagonists just happen to be rabbits. They are like anatomically correct rabbits, and Richard Adam goes into great detail about fairly correct rabbit biological traits and abilities. So you get to learn a bit about rabbits and you get to go on a journey. But one of the things that I really remember really enjoying about Watership Down is that there's one rabbit and I believe his name is Fiverr, if I remember correctly. Let me just look and see if I can figure it out. I think it's Fiverr and he's kind of a mystical rabbit. Like he is extra sensitive to things that are about to happen or are going to happen. And it's really easy to overlook him and think that he's just being a crybaby or just being neurotic. Fiverr kind of represents the introverts and the people who are sensitive to things that are going on in the community, but there's no fact behind them yet, but they just kind of feel that something's about to happen. And sometimes I feel like that special bunny. So I really like how, you know, Fiverr is listened to and is an important character in here. He's not just like the crazy prophet that we make into a hermit and put him on the hill, you know, sort of idea. I remember really enjoying this and this is definitely one of the books that I need to reread very soon. This is The Maestro by Tim Wynn Jones, and I read this in about 2011 for a children's literature class at university, and I enjoyed this so much that I read it twice that semester. This is a book about, I think his name's Burl, is the main character, and he's 14, and he's having some bad stuff happening at home, and he eventually makes his way into a wilderness and finds the cabin of a secluded musical genius. This is a really interesting book that a little bit looks at fairy tale themes. It looks at living in like the Canadian wilderness in winter time. It looks at isolation and solitude. It looks at genius and it was just really fun. There are also some suspenseful moments. Shit goes down in the woods, but it's not like a horror or a thriller per se. This was something that just snuck up on me as something I really, really enjoyed. And in fact, I enjoyed it so much that I tried another book by Tim Wynn Jones, but it just didn't hold up to what I thought was the awesomeness of the maestro. So if you love stories about solitude, if you love stories that take place in the woods, in seclusion, and if you love a tiny bit of fairy tale thrown in there as well, I highly recommend that you give the maestro a try. And the last book I want to talk to you about is Some Place to be Flying by Charles Delint. I read this in 2012 as well. In 2012, I started a very, very amorous relationship with Charles Delint because I hadn't previously found a, a way to get into urban fantasy before. And Charles Delint is a really prolific urban fantasy writer. This one is all about native mythology. So native Canadian or native American mythology and the idea of crow and coyote and the crow girls and raven. It was the raven, not the crow. Characters and persons in the mythology and creation myths and them being actual people in this. This is quite a big book. I think it's like 600, 600 or so pages. And it's a, a book that's kind of sweeping and intersects a lot of different characters. I think there's maybe three like pairs of characters that you're learning about and they all get connected into this mystical world where Raven, the crow girls, the coyotes, or not the coyotes, coyote and the cuckoos are actual people and mortals getting drawn into immortal feuds and battles. Fun fact too, there's a scene in here where uh, a character makes herself mint tea by like putting mint leaves in hot water. And this book was why I started drinking peppermint tea and why I now really enjoy peppermint tea. So thanks someplace to be flying. I've been meaning to pick this up for many years to reread it because this was one of the first Charles Lint that I read. And then I read like nine of his things and bought like almost all of his books. But eventually my steam kind of ran out, you know, after reading so much of him. So I haven't picked anything up by him in a in long time since then. But this is one that got five stars from me that I really, really enjoyed and that I've been meaning to reread ever since. So those were the five books that I wanted to talk with you about today. Let me know in the comments down below if you have heard of these or read them 
or if you have any recommendations for me based on the books that I talked about. And please let me know if you pick up any of these books because I randomly recommended them to you today. Thank, thank, thank you for watching and thank, thank you to my patrons as always. And until next time, continue to be lovely.